Oh, but joining us now, a guy who got it right and is happy to remind us of that fact, it's our friend Grover, Grover Norquist, the founder and president of Americans for Tax Reform, Skyping in from Washington. Uh, Grover, uh, personal modesty or the lack thereof aside, uh, why, why do you think so many of the polls and the election models were wrong this year? Well, there are just so many factors. Uh, one, you know, people are using cell phones. Pollsters in general are having trouble finding people and getting people to talk to them. Two, uh, you never know whether people are going to vote, even if they intend to vote, they mean to vote, maybe they don't. How do you measure intensity? Do you care about the country? <laughs> The answer is yes. You know, do you care about the direction? Yes. You know, um, and yet people get busy, uh, and it's tough. I mean, there are all these ads on TV. Which ones move you? Which ones don't? Sometimes an ad by one candidate, they spend a lot of money, turns you off, and makes you vote for the other guy. Uh, so what's what I think is very interesting is all of those rolling averages. Uh, real clear politics. You know, takes five or more polls and rolls them together. That really, I think, fixes a lot of the problems of outliers, of, of people who ask the question a little bit off or who asked it on a different odd day uh, so, when something happened. You put that together, the averages did better than any one poll. And uh, mindful of that, but of course with not only polling averages from real clear politics or anybody yeah. else, you took a look based on your experience and your gut and the four top Senate races, you were four for four. Now, in addition to rolling averages, what did you take into account for making those predictions? One, I was looking at some of the polls, but I was predicting Tillis to win in North Carolina, even though I'm not sure you would have drawn that from, from the polls. Uh, looking at where they'd come, where the momentum was, and knowing some of the ads that were being run uh, Hagan in North Carolina had run some really nasty, vicious, racist ads against uh, Tillis, and I thought those were beginning to catch up with with her. Uh, there was a saturation on the amount of advertising and the money they spent a hundred million dollars uh, in that in that race on between both sides, uh, and and there was a wave. I mean, this is very tough to tell, but you can certainly see it in hindsight where the Republicans picked up over 700 state legislative races. That was not, you know, Soros or Coke money. That was not how people felt about Obama. Uh, that was not ISIS. You know, they, they, they put, took both houses in Nevada, for crying out loud. Republicans captured them both. That, that hadn't happened in some time. Both houses in West Virginia, that hadn't happened in 83 years. Uh, so the wave was people moving towards the Republicans, away from the Democrats. I saw it with the Democrats hiding from their brand this entire, so not just running away from Obama, running away from the word Democrat. They ran Nunn and Pryor and Landrew and Udall. They were running on, hey, remember my dad, you know, uh, who was a governor or a senator in the past. They, the left, the Democrats had decided that the brand, don't vote for me, I'm a Democrat, used to work in West Virginia, used to work in Arkansas, used to work in Louisiana, um, used to work in Alaska. That was brought in as the Democrat state originally. Uh, Hawaii was the Republican state when they came in in the 60s. Uh, the D's, the Democrats, have lost or damaged their brand in many, many cases, and they were running away from that. That struck me as the Democrats seeing a wave coming and trying to avoid it. Grover, about three minutes left, and as you were speaking, we, we saw the screen grab from the Hill, uh, noting that you won their competition for uh, most yeah. accurate prognostication. But there were so, so, some surprises for all of us, uh, especially right there, uh, as you come to us from the District of Columbia, uh, in Virginia, our old pal Ed Gillespie is within a whisker of winning a Senate seat. Yeah. And meantime, in the People's Republic of Maryland, Larry Hogan gets elected governor. Do those two races rank as the biggest surprises? I, I think they really do. I mean, there was some uh, Massachusetts went Republican with the governor's race, uh, but they've done that from time to time in 
uh, in Massachusetts. The governor of Maine, LePage, who's been a great governor, but Maine is, uh, he's trying to work in a tough state. Uh, he got reelected. A lot of people thought that was unlikely. The polling certainly didn't look good for LePage as we went through. Illinois, the Republicans won the governorship there. Uh, but I think the two that you mentioned, uh, people thought Ed Gillespie was down 10 points. He's within a whisper. He may yet win with a recount. And uh, the Republican in uh, Maryland is replacing an outgoing guy uh, who wants to run as a, for president based on his record. And uh, Brown, his lieutenant governor, uh, is losing because of that record. I, I think we may have seen a presidential campaign destroyed with this election because the outgoing governor is not more difficult for him to run, given that the state rejected him on his way out. And about a, a minute remains. I, since you're president of America's Americans for Tax Reform, and there's the power lunch going on at the White House right now, do you think the president and the Republican leaders might be able to agree on tax reform? I think it's extremely unlikely. I think there are a few things that they might agree on. One would be repatriation, allowing the two trillion dollars in American company corporate profits overseas to be brought back to the United States with no tax penalty or a, a very small tax penalty, not the 35 percent that can hit people. Um, we should do that permanently, but Bush did it for two years and 400 billion dollars came back. We've now got two trillion stuck over there. It would benefit everybody to bring that money back to the United States ASAP. Even Obama might be willing to do that for the American people. Uh, 30 seconds remain. Uh, if you're still in the predicting mode, care to predict who the Republican nominee will be in 2016? One of six people, Christie, Scott Walker, Rick Perry, uh, Jeb Bush, Rand Paul, Bobby Jindal. One of those, they're all governors except for Rand Paul. I think tough for anybody else to get on the stage at this point. Uh, I'm for the guy who wins the primary. All right, Grover, keep your eye on John Kasich from Ohio. Just one name to add to the mix. And we appreciate your time as always. We'll have you back real soon uh, for more insights and analysis there from Washington, D.C. So the G-man, Grover Norquist, he correctly predicted what was going to happen this last election. We'll see about 2016. And we'll see you back following this Newsmax Now update.